All right, let's start with your name. Where'd your name come from? Uh, King Wo. Um, the original name was uh, Wody. Like in, in high school, my name was Lil Wody. So, um, like, my people from Louisiana, you know what I mean? So, people would be like, oh, you from Louisiana? Oh, we gonna call you Lil Wody. You know what I mean? So, uh, coming off of that, we shortened it up, and then uh, they just started calling me Woe. And for a long time, that was my name. Uh, so then we flipped it up one time, and I was like, well, shit, I'm just calling myself King Woe. So, you know, King Woe it is what it is today. All right, let's take it back a little bit. What type of student were you in school? I was a bad student. Like, I got... Um, I got expelled when I was 13 for like bringing a pistol to school, theft by taking, uh, terroristic threats. And I got sent to an alternative school. I spent most of my, my teenage life was like on probation and parole and papers. Like, you know what I mean? I went to juvenile at like a real young age. So, you know, I wasn't a great student. I wanted to do good. I just felt like I was too smart to be there. Did you graduate high school? I did. <laughs> Dropped out? Yeah. Well, great. Tenth. Any thoughts of going back and getting a GED or no? Well, I got my GED. Okay. Yeah, I went and got my GED. I felt like, you know what I mean? You got to stay educated as a black man in America. You got to, you know what I mean? You got to do something with yourself. Did you attempt college? Yeah, 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 yeah. I tried a little bit. I'm still trying. <laughs> I try to take some classes whenever I can. I try to be smart, man. I feel like you can't get into this world without having knowledge. You know, the world is based on knowledge. So if you're not, you know, up on your game as far as uh, uh, being intelligent and trying to really, you know, better yourself by reading books, you know what I mean, and learning simple, simple things that, you know, we do, then, you know, you're really going to be, you're going to be slow. A lot of the artists get, messed out of their deals for not knowing, not knowing how to read. Simple words. Simple words. Jobs you had growing up, if any? Jobs. Um, I worked at Sonics. I was flipping burgers for a while, man, when I was 15. That shit was dope, though, because I was flipping some burgers, and then I'd go sell some loud at the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was all good. That just made a lot of money, actually, man. Any crazy stories dealing with that job? Um, not too many. Not too many. Like, you know what I mean? I always been a smart hustler, so I never got caught really hustling. I always got I always got caught like every other hustler, like on the humbug. You know what I mean? You get pulled over with some weed in the car or, you know what I mean? Like, like for me, my mom told on me. You know what I mean? My mom snitched me out. To the to the to my probation officer said I was smoking weed and that's how I got really jammed up. What's the worst thing you put your parents through? <clears throat> like I said, coming up, um, you know what I mean. Now that I'm older and I'm able to look back on it, you know what I mean. I feel like, especially me having a son, you know what I mean. I can definitely see how stressful it was for like me to, you know what I mean, be on probation and then they have to like come up to the school and then like. Like go like see my probation officer, and, you know what I mean. Like you don't want your you don't want your child to be no criminal, you know what I mean. You don't want your child to have to go through certain things in life, and like damn sure don't want them to you know have to be on probation and have to go to like drug classes and shit like that. So you know what I mean? that's that's probably my big regret. You talked about getting jammed up probably the worst by your mother. Did you ever forgive her for that? Oh, yeah, man. Me and moms is good, man. We good forever, you know. I feel like whatever your mama do to you, man, she only doing it because she love you. So you can never, like, really, you came out of her, you know. You came out of the queen. You can't, you can't hate the queen. can't hate you. You can't hate what, what gave life to you. You can never do that. That's, that's, that's rules against the game. You think she'll ever jam me up again? Shit, she might. Shit. <laughs> she, she, hey, look. Hey, my mom is known to tell whatever she got to tell to make sure that she's good. My mom ain't going to jail for nobody. You can guarantee that. Uh, you, you play if you want to. She'll send my ass to jail before she go to jail for me. All right. 
What's your message to the youth? I mean, thugging ain't all it's cracked up to be. You know what I mean? I ain't, you know, when I rap and when I speak on what I speak on, I, I definitely want to make sure that they know that I'm just speaking from my experiences and this is all just entertainment and a turn up. You know what I mean? So don't get it twisted. Don't get it like messed up. Like I, I want you to do these things because I don't. I'd rather you go to college. I'd rather you do something, you know, important with yourself. I don't give a fuck if you a fireman, a police officer. I don't care if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor. Like, you need to be those things. You need to be something. You, it ain't all about basketball and rapping. And that's what's important. In today's youth in black America, you can be whatever you want. You can be president. You can be vice president. You can be a congressman. You can be a senator. You know what I mean? Whatever, a statesman. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I just want, you know, the youth to know that, you know, we, we, we here just to tell our story. We're not here to put that in a, an impression that you should mimic us. And that's what's important. Let's talk music for a little bit. When it comes to the music industry, what bothers you the most about it at this point? What's your biggest pet peeve with it? Uh, I would definitely think that my biggest pet peeve with the music industry is that it's not like just letting anybody in anybody can do anything and like get signed it's not even based on artistry anymore or how well that you can put these words together or the type of music or feelings or emotions that you're trying to explain to people it just seems like you know if you got a lot of likes on your pictures on instagram and you just so happen to rap you could be a rapper like that's just stupid you know what i mean or if you rap on one producer's beats you like you can be a rapper, like nah, man. Like it's dumb, it's dumb, it's stupid. I'm sorry, man. Like I can't help you. I can't help you with that. A lot of the, I feel like a lot of the artists, they ain't really gonna last too long. You know what I mean? And that's me coming in the game, and I don't even know if I'ma last. But I can just tell, just as a fan of music, I just feel like we need to do better. We can do better for rap, for hip hop. Who do you blame for that? Do you blame the uh, record labels and the, the industry? Or do you blame the fans for accepting it and taking it? Well, it got a, I feel like it got a lot to do with the, the, the industry and um, a lot of the record labels. I feel like they it, it's come to a point where they're accepting anything. And you can't just accept anything. Even though it may be hot at that moment, you got to, you know what I mean, we got to move, we got to move through that moment we gotta pick, we gotta definitely pick like bigger, better targets for what we're trying to hit. Like the fans, the fans is gonna like what you give them. So if you bumping a single on the radio all the time, playing the video all the time, and that's all they hear, then yeah, that's all they gonna, that's all they gonna like because you know, life is about perception, it's about what you see. So if that's all you see every day, all day, you have, it's almost like you have no choice but to like it. Because that's what's popular. And all people want to do is be popular and be liked and be accepted. Can this be fixed? Of course it can. You can fix it. But I don't know if the world is ready to fix it. I also feel like people want to show like black people like as stupid as they can possibly be. And like as dumb as they can possibly be. They want... They put people on the screen, you can tell by like, you know, TV interviews and stuff like that. They put people on screen that probably the most ignorant people in the world for entertainment, right? So if you put an ignorant person on TV and you say, that's, this is entertainment, then that's what people are going to acknowledge and people are going to mimic. So if we take a positive person, we put them on there and then we promote them you know, and do more. And it don't have to be, like, super clean Kendrick Lamar. You know what I mean? Like, pro. But just somebody who got the knowledge and who can, who can, who can actually, you know, portray something that is flexible, that is attainable, who's given the game. You know, we can do better. Top three things you need in the studio. I need a blunt. I need a Red Bull. I need some douche. What's in the blunt? What strain? Drink OG. 
craziest studio story, if you have one? Uh, we did, Jay. I don't know. We don't have too many crazy studio stories, man. Like, when I go to the studio, I'm working. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what these people are doing. We don't invite a lot of girls to the studio. Like, when we go to the studio, we in there working on our craft. We, like, really focused. Like, we're, you know what I mean? We locked in. We trying to actually accomplish a goal, and that is to create the best music that we could possibly create. What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? Written a song. What is that, Jay? I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Real song is, I can say right now is If It Rains, which is the intro track to uh, the If It Rains album with me and DJ Smalls, man. That's the realest track I had ever spit, man. It says a lot. It says a lot about the game, I feel, and me. So, What's that record about? The record is about like, it, 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 I touch on a few, a few little places here and there, but the biggest thing is that um, I want people to recognize the talent that me and my comrades have, the company that I'm trying to build, you know what I mean? The things that we are trying to start as far as hip hop music, like you know, quality street music, like we trying to, you know what I mean? like take this game to a whole nother level. A little bit beyond what, what it looks like now. And um, to me, it means that you can overcome anything. You can be down, but as long as you believe in yourself that you know one day it could rain, rain supreme. Risk first reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Man, me and Jay. Me and Miles Rodden took so many risks, man. Um, we did. Like, one time, me and Jay, man, we was in the A. Who was that? We was, in, um, was in Riverdale. We was in Riverdale. So we in Riverdale, no money. Broke as fuck. So we done went and got some money for, I think, Jay Mama or something for gas. And we drove... All the way to uh, uh, what Columbus, Georgia. Drove all the way to Columbus, Georgia, to pick up a producer. <laughs> we drove all the way to Columbus, Georgia, to pick up a producer, bring him back to Atlanta, just so he can make in-house beats for us, so that we can rap on them. Cause we had no other source, like, to rap on. Like that's that's risk. I'm talking about. We ride. We ain't riding straight. I ain't got no license. He ain't got no license. We got to, like, what, uh, have a QP or something like that sitting in, and we in, and we blowing gas the whole way there and the whole way back. But we was young, so we ain't know no better. We thinking, like, ah, whatever. You know, but when you look back on it, it was like, shh, we could have got jammed up so bad, man. <laughs> what are your keys to success? Um, keys to success is just stay focused. Uh, grind hard, gotta grind hard, man. I, I feel like, man, if you ain't grinding, then you ain't doing that. And then you always gotta just do better than what you did before. And that's why we here today. We try, we just trying to do better than what we did the last time. So those are, as Caleb would say, major keys. <laughs>